5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. If I were to ask you, what do we as a society know about lung cancer and about heart disease? You might say we know a bit about statistics of lung cancer and heart disease. So for example, for lung cancer, we know that the frequency, which is how often people have the disease, we know that lung cancer is a form of cancer. Cancer is the second most deadly type of disease in Australia. And 21% of all cancers are lung cancer. And overall, in 2007, 10,000 people developed lung cancer. So that's what we know about the frequency, about how often people have lung cancer and how deadly lung cancer is as well. What do we know about distribution of heart disease or lung cancer? Well, we know, for example, that smokers seem to have more lung cancer than non-smokers. We also know that people who are dealing with asbestos quite often also have a higher risk of lung cancer. Right, that's to, that's to distribution, who has lung cancer. And then we also can figure out the cause. And for example, we know that smoking is a major cause of lung cancer. So the next question is, if we know all this, how do we know that? How do we, how have we figured out these different factors that lead to lung cancer? How do we know the frequency? How do we know the distribution of the different types of disease? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video, because the actual dot point says identify and describe the main features of epidemiology using lung cancer as an example. So we're going to cover quickly what epidemiology is and then use lung cancer as an example of how we use epidemiology to find out frequency, distribution and cause of disease because that's more or less what lung cancer, sorry, what epidemiology is all about. So quickly, what does epidemiology actually mean? There's three parts to this word. Epi means among. Demio comes from the word demographics, comes from people. So demio means people. And lology means study. So what epidemiology actually is, is the study of health problems among people. Right? So epidemiology, we study health problems that occur among people, among our society. So it can be used to study both infectious disease, such as the flu, and it can be also used to study non-infectious disease, such as lung cancer and heart disease. So most of our statistics and knowledge about disease comes from these epidemiology studies that have been conducted for a couple of, I think, more than 100 years now. And we use this information to actually get to the core of why these diseases are caused and how, how many of them are in our society. So there's three different types of epidemiology studies. You should know these three different types. The first one is the descriptive study. So it's descriptive, it's called descriptive. And what this just entails is just collection of data. So we just collect data in a descriptive study. We don't really do much, we just collect data. Don't analyze it, that's next part. First, we just collect it. So for example, we collect who is affected. So we, we this is often done with questionnaires. So we have these questionnaires which are handed out to lots of people. And these questionnaires will then figure out who is actually affected, the geographic area, and the general habits of people who are affected. So for example, we might figure out that for smoking, lung cancer, sorry, lung cancer, we generally have more males than females. Who is affected? We know that age is important. So for example, someone who is a child will be less likely to have lung cancer than someone who is 50, 60, or 70. And obviously your general habits, which we'll discuss in a second as well, such as smoking, also play a role with who is affected. Right, so this is the first question, is who is affected? You know, age, gender, habits, all that kind of stuff. Then we also look at the geographical area. So for example, developed versus developing countries. We know that in the developed countries, there are more cases of, of lung cancer at the moment than in the developing countries. So for example, Australia has a higher um, rate of lung cancer than some African countries. We also know that sort of low, areas with low socioeconomic status, which means income, so areas in the country itself that have less income have a higher rate of lung cancer than areas of high income. And these are just a couple of different things. And we also, for example, know that Europe, so countries in Europe, 
have generally have a higher rate of lung cancer than countries such as Australia or other countries which are developed, not Europe. And also general habits, we also collect data on that. So we figure out, for example, using general habits data, we can figure out that generally um, people who are smokers tend to have a higher rate of lung cancer. And also, if, for example, you have a generally unhealthy lifestyle, the risk of having lung cancer is higher. But the main one we can figure out here is that smokers seem to have a higher risk. Right, so these are just descriptive. We're just collecting data. We're actually not analyzing it. We're just collecting this data for questionnaires. The second part is the analytical part. So it's the analytical study. And this is the part where we use all the data which we collected so from the first descriptive study. We use that data to actually analyze it, to see the cause and effect. For example, the effect would be lung cancer, right? So we, we can figure out that who has lung cancer is our effect. But what we want to do is we want to actually see what caused lung cancer. And we analyze this data to figure out what's actually causing lung cancer. So obviously, for example, smokers, I mentioned earlier, that's a huge sort of thing that caused lung cancer. So we've established, okay, we want to figure out what caused lung cancer. These questionnaires have given us data that one of the causes seems to be smoking. Right, so here what we've done is we have analyzed the data which we've collected in the first part to find out the cause and effect relationship. Effect was lung cancer, the cause seems to be smoking. But we also analyze the mortality and morbidity rates. Mortality is the death rate and the morbidity is sort of who is affected. So by getting lung cancer, you are have morbidity. So who is diseased is the morbidity rate, and mortality means who has died. So mortality is death, and morbidity is who has, has the disease. So we also analyze those two relationships. So for example, with smoking, if you have maybe let's say one cigarette a day, that's less of a problem than if you have let's say 10 cigarettes a day. So we're not just collecting, we're not just collecting your, if you're a smoker, non-smoker, but even how many cigarettes you have, that you have. And if that leads to a higher death rate or a higher mobility, so a higher mortality mobility rate than if you have only one. So we're comparing mortality and mobility rate. That's our effect, right? And we're looking at all kinds of things in our, in our possible cause. But the mortality and mobility rates are really important because they let us know if something actually causes in this case, lung cancer. There's two different types, which we'll go over in a second. They're called the cohort and the case control study. Both of these are examples of analytical studies. We'll go over them in a second. But the last one, the last type of study is the intervention study. And in the intervention study, what we do is we analyze the effectiveness of drugs and medicine. So for example, we might give someone a certain medication that we think that will actually help the person, but we give it to lots of people who have maybe, let's say, have lung cancer, give them this medication, and we compare if their symptoms and if their disease goes backwards or goes comes less over time. So for example, if let's say at the beginning, we had 10,000 people who have severe symptoms, and over, let's say, a month, the symptoms of lung cancer have gone down from 10,000 to 9,000. That means there has been a decrease, right? And that decrease might mean that the actual medication itself is effective. So what we do when it comes to these intervention studies is we're seeing if the intervention itself is having a positive effect. So for example, if you give medication, is that medication actually useful? And when it comes to lung cancer, one good program, so there's either with medication, drugs, or we can check at the effectiveness of programs. So you might, when it comes to lung cancer, you might have heard of the QUIT campaign, which should be all over your television. The QUIT campaign is actually international. It's from all over the world. We've done this campaign for many years. And the reason why is because we've tested if it's actually effective. So we've seen if the lung cancer rates, so people who are affected by lung cancer, if they go down, the longer we've had this QUIT campaign. And what we found is a quit campaign is actually really effective using these intervention studies. 
we found that the quick campaign is effective, which is why it's done in all countries all over the world, because it helps decrease the, the rate of lung cancer, because more people are put off smoking, for, for example. Right? So there are these three studies, you don't actually need to know too much detail about them. You should need, need to know that it's descriptive, analytical, and intervention, and kind of difference between the three. But the next part is the most important part, which is this here. We've got a, two different types. These are our analytical studies. Analytical studies, where we analyze the data. So we've got the cohort study, and we've got the case study. Case, sorry, case control study. Case control study. In the cohort study, what we do is we start out with a bunch of people. Right? So this is our start. Here, they're all healthy. So here they would all, when it comes to the example of lung cancer, here they all have no lung cancer, right? In the beginning, green means no lung cancer. Then we follow these guys around for 20 years. Let's say a time frame of 20 years. It doesn't have to be 20 years. So we used a time frame of 20 years in this example. And then 20 years later, we check who still has, who is still not affected and who is affected. So for example, 20 years later, we might say, okay, well now we have a few people who have actually developed lung cancer. And what we do now is we check what's the difference. Like what are these people doing that might give them lung cancer, right? So these people have lung cancer. And we might have checked their, and we give them questionnaires at the beginning and the start, these questionnaires where we get data. And we give the same questionnaire again at the end, just to see if the lifestyle makes any difference. So we might find that these red dots, these people who have gotten lung cancer, these might be the smokers. Right? So over 20 years, these might have developed lung cancer, whereas the other ones who were non-smokers, so these might be non-smokers. Non-smokers don't have lung cancer, whereas the smokers have lung cancer, lung cancer, which means we can do again the cause and effect relationship. So here we found out the cause must is probably to with smoking, and the effect was again in this case lung cancer. So lung cancer is effect, and we've established that smoking is maybe a cause with the help of these cohort studies. So in the cohort study, we follow a group of people around for long periods of time and check who develops the disease and who doesn't develop the disease. Now in a case control study, there's a bit of a difference. There's no following people around. It just it starts and it finishes straight away. All we do is we collect data. But here we collect data from people who are the case. So in this case, people who are case are the red ones. These are the ones which have lung cancer. So they already have lung cancer to begin with. And the, the control ones, which are the green ones, the control have no lung cancer. So all we're doing is we're going, for example, we're going to a large group of people, collecting data from all kinds of people, for people who have lung cancer and from people who have no lung cancer. We don't follow them around. We just collect the data. It's a one-off collection of data. So we collect the data, and then we analyze the data. So again, we might have collected a whole bunch of people, both people who are the case, which are, the, in this case, the effective ones who are affected with lung cancer, and the control, which don't have lung cancer. And then we're looking at the questionnaires that we've, we've given them to collect the data to see if there are any sort of relationships. So for example, we might have found that most of these red dots, which are the people who are affected, are smokers. There might be some people who are exposed to asbestos during their lifetime quite a bit. That might have also given them lung cancer. Whereas most of the green ones, not, not all of them, but most of the green ones might be non-smokers. And they might not have been dealing much with asbestos. So again, here, this is another different type of study where we have the cause and effect relationship. We've managed to establish that the effect, which is lung cancer, is probably caused by smoking. All right, so a case and control study is just one, a one-off collection of data, lots of collection of data, and that data then gets analyzed. Whereas a core study, it starts, we follow this group around, 20 years later, we collect the data again to see at the beginning, they were all healthy, but see who developed, of that same group, who developed um, a the disease, in this case, lung cancer, to see if there are certain factors which, which cause that to lung cancer. Now, this is the next part I'm saying, is the, the dot point, identify and describe the main features of epidemi epidemi epidemiology using lung cancer as an example. These are the six main features. Overall, they should be conducted over long periods of time. This only applies to a cohort study because case study, remember, that's a one-off. We don't follow them over long periods of time. But, but the longer the period, the usually the better. So, for example, I have 20 years here. If, if it starts and we collect the data again after one year, 
So one year later, that's only one year. There might not have been enough time for people to actually develop lung cancer if they're smokers. So we want to make sure we have a longer period where we, could, where we actually fold them around. So conduction over a long period is a useful feature. So 20 years is generally better than one year, especially when it comes to something like lung cancer. Right? Lung cancer is something that takes time to develop. We also want to have a larger sample size. So here, I mean, this is just tiny. This might be 10 people here, but obviously usually you want to have it bigger. We want to have a sample size, so that's of how many participants we have, a sample size of about 1,000 or more. And the reason why is if, you know, these four people develop lung cancer, you could say, well, that's maybe random. It's maybe a, you know, a random thing. It, it might mean if we have a larger sample size, that might not have happened. But if we have, instead of having just 10, if we have 1,000, and then instead of having four, because we have more people, now we have 1,000 participants, and let's say we have 400 of them, 400 of them developing lung cancer, that's something that's hard to ignore. You know, that's not just randomness, that there must be some relationship here. So the larger lamp, the larger the lamp size, the larger the sample size, the higher the likelihood that the, this, the actual data is relevant. Also, we want to collect relevant data. Now, what I mean by that is we want to make sure, for example, if we think that smoking causes lung cancer, we want to make sure we ask in the questionnaire, we want to ask them if they're smokers. But not just that, we might also want to ask them how long they've been smokers. If they just started, or if they've been smoking for, you know, 10 years, 20 years. Maybe how many cigarettes they smoke. So how many cigarettes they smoke. Maybe if they are exposed to passive smoke and all that kind of stuff. So that's a relevant data. We want to collect data which is relevant to what we're actually studying, right? We're not going to ask them if they watch Simpsons or South Park because that might be interesting, but for the actual study, lung cancer, it's irrelevant, irrelevant, right? So we're going to collect data, which is maybe giving us more of an insight into the cause and effect relationship. So in this case, we're going to collect data for if they're smoking, how long they've been smoking, how many cigarettes they smoke a day, et cetera, et cetera. Also, we're going to have a variety of participants. This is especially important in a case control study. So for example, if you have a case control study here, and we want to find out if, if smoking causes lung cancer, If we have that as our sort of thing that we want to find out, if we follow around people who have all been exposed to asbestos, right, just one group of people have all been exposed to asbestos, then the, the actual data we get from this might not give us a really clear result because we know asbestos also causes lung cancer. In this case, we have only one type of, of participants, and that gives us some sort of you know knowledge, but we can't make a clear relationship between smoking and lung cancer if all of our participants have been exposed to asbestos because it might be the asbestos causing lung cancer and not the smoking. So we want to make sure we have a variety of participants to make sure that we can establish a link from all different types of participants, not just one small group. That's especially important in the case control study. And the control group, again, that's not important for the cohort study, but it is important for the control study. And what the control group is, is just one group of participants that is not affected compared to the case group, which is affected. We want to have a control group, especially in a case control study. And we want to make sure we collect morbidity, mortality rates. Remember, morbidity is who has the disease, so who has it, and mortality is how many of the people who have it die. So how many of the people who have the disease die is mortality, and morbidity is who actually has the disease. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is killing me. All right, so... To sum it up, what you need to know is you need to know these six factors and if they apply to a cohort study or a case study, right? And what you should also know is you, you might actually, there's many questions in the HC which ask you to basically construct your own cohort study or your own case study. So you don't only need to know these factors, but how to use them as well. If you're given a question like you know, design experiment to figure out uh, if eating cheeseburgers kills you, then you would have to think about, you know, what kind of sample size would you use? What kind of period would you conduct it in? What kind of data would you, would you collect? All that kind of stuff. So you might have to apply to a real world example. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.